Eight Ways to Decrease Inflammation in Your Body. I'm Dr. Carrie Lamb. This is Dr. Michael Lamb. And uh, everyone has inflammation in their body that they're going through, but we're here to give you eight easy ways on how you can do that. Number one is basically to take stress out of the equation. Well, stress... <laughs> it is hard. Right? It is easy to say, but it's very <laughs> difficult. And everybody's ability to manage stress varies. For something, it could be for one person is stressful, but and the other person, they thrive on it. The problem with the stress is that we know that the body has a way to get rid of it ourselves. So the neuroendometabolic response is already there. The problem is when this response is overwhelmed, either by acute stress or chronic stress, that's when we get into trouble. Mm -hmm. And so number two is to keep your gut healthy. Well, the, the, the gut is now becoming such an important concept in, in, in uh, holistic medicine because we now know that, well, for example, over 90% of the neurotransmitters uh, of some of them, especially like serotonin, for example, are actually made in the gut, the precursors. So without a healthy uh, and strong gut, it's almost impossible to feel good. And that's why the gut is called a, a second brain, you see. Mm -hmm. And when your body feels a lot of inflammation, sometimes your gut is the first to feel it. You're feeling kind of queasy, you have abdominal discomfort and things like that. Yeah, and, and I have many people come to me, you know, they say, yeah, they do extensive GI work of endoscopy, scans, you know, my bridal sac, you know, or H2 blockers, you know, whatever they've gone through. And they don't feel any better, you see what I'm saying? So with each and more aggressive type of therapy, including antibiotics, you know, kill the germs, you know, H. pylori, you know, get rid of the bugs. You know, the, the problem is that you, sometimes you have to go back down to basics and really ask yourself, where are we heading with this thing? You know, gut dysbiosis is such a wide term that's being kind of thrown around. Uh, but the gut has its own ability to self-balance. Mm -hmm. The question is, can you retain and re remain at that balance at the optimum shape? Yeah. And this is not something that you, you can just uh, get a knife and then just cut it off, so to say. Mm -hmm. And you have to work with the body mm -hmm. and understand how the mucosa works, understand how your gut works, and then help it along. Mm -hmm. Right. So number two is to help your gut and therefore help inflammation. Number three is to keep your blood sugar in check. Well, uh, blood sugar is, is definitely a key trigger uh, for inflammatory response, mm -hmm. uh, high blood sugar in particular. Uh, but, you know, uh, what we have to learn is to maintain a sugar level, a uh, glucose level that's pretty steady. And that is the key. These ups and down uh, valleys and troughs are very damaging to the body. Yeah, the ups and downs is what spikes the insulin mm -hmm. uh, and then causes more insulin resistance. So keeping your blood sugar uh, stable is very important to helping inflammation. And some people will even say, well, you know, the moment we help them to stabilize and keep a balanced sugar, they will feel less discomfort, you know, uh, uh, discomfort that uh, is simplified uh, by, uh, amplified by a, uh, like a joint uh, a stretching easily uh, or mm -hmm. discomfort that moves around or migrating mm -hmm. uh, tend to go down, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So number four is to keep your hormones in balance, too. Well, most people don't think of hormones as... Uh, inflammatory uh, related but the reality is that certain type of hormones especially anabolic hormones uh, such as testosterone estrogen mm -hmm. uh, even thyroid uh, their job is to increase metabolic uh, processes and by that definition they increase uh, metabolic byproducts which also can uh, drive to uh, increased inflammation mm -hmm. so you know for the sake of energy and uh, many people come to me they, they've been put on uh, thyroid or uh, testosterone uh, but then they can uh, pay a price uh, for mm -hmm. that you know? yeah so keep your hormones in balance is the best for helping inflammation too number five is to avoid toxins well, I, I wish it's, I mean, it's easy to say, but in this world that we are living in, it's almost impossible to be a toxic, toxin free, mm -hmm. uh, even if you are in the most right. pristine environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but do the best we can. You know, mm -hmm. there are obvious toxins like plastics, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 synthetic hormones, you know, uh, heavy metals, yeah. you know, things mm -hmm. that you want to stay away. And, and then you have to be reasonable and, and live a life that allows you not only uh, to uh, accept certain amount of toxins, but most, most importantly is allow your neuroendometabolic stress response to get rid 
of it automatically. And the body has this mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, avoiding toxin is definitely uh, no harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other things you can do is like eating it organic so you don't get the extra pesticides in you. Those are all toxins that your body might not be able to like, get rid of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So number six is to change your diet. You know, we were just talking about organic, but what other changes can you do to decrease inflammation? Well, inflammatory foods like uh, uh, fried foods and uh, food that's highly processed, uh, should obviously be avoided and uh, it, it's very important to know that everybody is a little different you see there's no two body that's alike so for person a uh, grains may be inflammatory but for person b grain may also be an, uh, inflammatory but not to the same degree so does it mean that person b uh, you know, uh, don't take as much grains as person A. The answer is it depends on the person. So we go into very great details on what the food groups, what your blood type, uh, what your uh, lactin load is, for example, to give the body specific, uh, almost like a Rolls Royce tailoring, rather than just throw generalities out, which uh, when you want to reduce inflammation from a global perspective, you have to have a global plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so number six is to change your diet, but personalize it. Mm -hmm. Number seven is to get regular exercise. Yeah, well, exercise is important. It's part of the detoxification uh, process, and certainly it can reduce inflammation, but excessive exercise uh, can actually cause inflammation. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, the human being, for example, uh, is not really designed uh, from the get-go to run a full marathon of 26 miles. And if you're not trained, you can actually feel the body heated up after you finish. It happened to me yeah, when I was not well trained. And that's actually an indicator uh, that your body's inflamed more than it should be. So you have to learn to listen to your body when you exercise. Mm -hmm. Right. Exercise smartly. Mm -hmm. And number eight is consider nutritional supplements. Well, there's so many supplements out there to reduce inflammation. You have proven ones, and you have some ones kind of in the peripheral, and you have ones that is really doesn't uh, have the, uh, the the science, but just a, a lot of marketing. But the proven ones are, for example, uh, fish oil. Uh, but not only any fish oil, but fish oil that is, for example, molecularly distilled and high quality that can be delivered properly. Uh, you know, those are very important. And there is a difference, you know, and if you are not... Uh, weak, you will not feel the difference. But if you are weak and, and it's just like many people come to me with adrenal fatigue, you will know the difference. I know the difference. And that's why I only take the, the things that is right for my body. And I do things for myself before I give it to my clients, for example. So molecularly mm. distilled means it takes away the mercury. Yeah, so the mercury, for example, is, is less than uh, a few parts per billion. And you cannot be saying that zero parts per billion uh, because that doesn't uh, ex uh, doesn't exist, so to say, as much as we like it to be. Mm -hmm. But reduce as much as possible. Uh, but each supplement has ways uh, to be able to be delivered uh, for the best anti-inflammatory uh, properties. For example, even turmeric and uh, curcumin, uh, you know, the way you uh, process these uh, uh, items, the way you make them bioavailable, uh, makes a big difference in the ultimate uh, cellular response. I'm talking about fermentation example. Well, fermentation is one of them, the quality, the standardization, the sourcing, you know, all these things are important. And that's why not all supplements are the same. They're not all made equal. Mm -hmm. So those are our top eight tips on how to decrease inflammation. We're here to help you empower yourself to, on your health journey.